Hello there, welcome to the Saroy channel. I just love you listeners so very much. Thank you so much for joining me. You guys are so wonderful and I think you're really going to enjoy tonight's story. It's a lovely, lovely story. It comes from, uh, it actually comes from David from Virginia and you're just going to love it. It's called Graveyard Thief. So let's get started. Dear Sarah and to all your listeners, I'm going to pretend my name is David for the purpose of remaining anonymous, if you do not mind. I work for, worked for a while as a grave digger in Virginia at a cemetery. Our cemetery was situated on a vast acreage of wild land with plenty of woods. There is a crematorium there as well as a site office for visitors who are wanting to look for an old grave site or who desire to bury a loved one on the land or get them cremated. We have some graves here that are extremely old. They go back to the 1800s as well. So there's a great deal of history attached to our cemetery. One day there was a funeral that someone had arranged by the graveside only hours after their loved one had died in an accident. The family wanted the burial as quickly as possible because they believed it would help their daughter to move on to the next world quicker, if you know what I mean. After everyone had left and the funeral was over, it was my job to go and clean up the site and fill the grave in. I decided to go and have a quick lunch before I filled in the grave. And when I came back, I noticed the largest footprint I had ever seen in the moist sand that surrounded the hole that was to be filled in. To say I was flummoxed is an understatement. The footprint was 22 inches in length, and that is huge. Another thing was that the footprint was bare, and it was winter. Who on earth goes around the place without shoes? I also noticed a very musky, stale kind of odour in the air. It smelt a bit like a dirty dog and skunk mixed together. And I just knew that something wasn't right. I climbed into the open hole and noticed that the clasps on the coffin had been opened. And that was strange. I knew I had to open the coffin and so I did. Do not ask me why, but something in my gut told me to do it. The coffin was completely empty. There was no sign of the corpse. It was missing. I was in shock. Should I tell the boss or should I continue digging the grave? Somehow that seemed wrong, but then I thought about all the ramifications it would involve. I had been through tragedy myself and I knew exactly what that was like. And I didn't want to subject that poor family to more grief than they had been through already. They had been through enough losing their daughter in such a tragic way and they needed closure. And if they found out that their daughter had been snatched, it would tear them apart. I decided to fill in the grave, but it was not easy for me to do by any means. I did feel extremely reluctant, but I knew that it was in the interest of the family. Who or what had snatched the dead corpse of the young woman, I do not know. And why? I wondered who would do such a macabre thing like that. It was cruel to say the least. A couple of days later, things did happen again. I was just about to load the coffin into the crematorium, helped by my friend Alan, who commented on how light the coffin was because we needed to put it into the oven. I told Alan that I wanted to look in the coffin quickly, but I suggested that he look the other way because I knew how squeamish he was. He turned away quickly without any persuasion. What are you doing? He complained, just checking something I said. I opened the coffin and as I expected, it was empty. The corpse had completely disappeared. I said nothing to Alan and pushed the coffin into the crematorium oven. Who and what had stolen the body, I thought. Things were getting crazy. Smell that, commented my friend. Once again, that same horrible musty smell, that skunky odour. I could smell it in the crematorium. And I had that same smell outside in the graveyard 
when that other corpse had vanished. It was extremely odd. Woo, said Alan. It must be the corpse decaying already. The smell is so rank in here. I knew I had to get to the bottom of this. This was an enigma and I needed to solve it. I thought something or someone was stealing bodies from our mortuary and they needed to be stopped and they needed to be stopped now. It was then that I had a plan. The next time the funeral service around the grave site was complete, I would hide somewhere and apprehend the culprit. I would take along my rifle, I thought, just to be sure. It was a day or so later when a corpse of a young man in a motorcycle accident from a motorcycle accident was being buried. The guy had been Jewish, so it is always their custom to have a quick send-off to the other side. And that is what they always do. The grave was luckily in a very idyllic position, surrounded by some large pine trees. I hid behind one of the trees, and then I saw him. What I saw was horrifying. This was a creature such of the likes I have never seen before. I would say he was a thousand pounds, and that wouldn't be an exaggeration. He might have even been more. He was definitely a nine-footer at least. His whole body was covered with white hair, and his long arms hung beyond his knees. And yes, he reeked to high heaven of the most disgusting, rotting, garbage kind of smell. He had a cone-shaped head and virtually no neck, if any. I could see his face until he turned around and his large eyes darted all over the cemetery, as if he was making sure that nobody was around. Then quite suddenly he jumped into the open hole, which I was about to fill in, and before I knew it, he had the corpse of the dead man on his shoulders. I watched the creature on lanky long legs exit the forest line that surrounds the cemetery within seconds, just a few strides of his legs. Then he was gone, just like that. It happened so fast. I stood still for a moment, wondering what I had seen. The creature was humanoid, but with a primate look about him. I did not know that such a creature could even exist. My heart was pounding through my chest and I was shaking with terror. I just knew I had to get out here fast. The next day I tendered my resignation with the cemetery and told them that I could not do the job anymore. Now I'm glad to tell you I work at a bakery and my life dealing with corpses has long since been left behind me. I recently discovered that the creature I had seen that day was a Sasquatch. I also learned from my friend who still works at the yard that they had two bodies stolen from the graveside recently and one from the crematorium. He told me that they now have to bury the whole coffin immediately and check every coffin before the body is cremated. They even hired a long string of guards, but none of them have ever stayed long, he told me. If we are lucky, they last three days at the most and then they're gone like that without any explanation. None of them want to talk, but something is freaking them out. So I hope you and your listeners enjoyed my story. And I also hope that the creature may change his diet soon and not bother that cemetery anymore. Thank you so much for a wonderful story and thanks to my lovely listeners. Until next time, good night.